So after we've selected our topic that we want to focus our sociological research on, the next stage in the scientific method is researching existing sources. So this is a very important and oftentimes very time consuming portion of the research process, something that we call reviewing the literature. So in sciences, when we're talking about literature, we're not talking about novels or, you know, science fiction books. Literature refers to scientific publications, which are also referred to as scholarly sources that report original empirical research in the natural and social sciences. Okay, so a scholarly source to be called a scholarly source, something needs to undergo several different stages. Um, it's a very rigorous process to get something published in a, in a scholarly journal or an academic uh, source. And a lot of people don't realize that there's a distinction here, right? In order for something to be considered science, to get published in a scholarly source, it has to undergo a really, really rigorous review process. So what makes a source a scholarly source? Well, here are a few characteristics. First, it needs to be written by a scholar with an affiliation, typically to an academic or research institution, right? So very unlikely that you would see someone uh, without a minimum, at least a bachelor's degree, publishing a scholarly source. Um, oftentimes, scholarly sources are published by people with advanced graduate degrees, PhDs, doctorates of some sort, because it takes a lot of practice and a lot of work to uh, produce science that is of high enough quality that it actually gets published. Uh, second, it's published by an academic institution or scholarly organization. A lot of, uh, for example, academic journals is what they're called, are kind of just um, little books or magazines of sorts that are published by scholarly organizations that report research studies, academic scholarly articles that so social scientists and all scientists produce their research and basically write a paper or report uh, and it gets reviewed and it gets published in one of these academic sources, these uh, journals that are published through these scholarly organizations. So the most important aspect of a scholarly source is that Say I conduct a study, right? I do some research, I collect some data, I generate my findings and I write up a paper and I wanna get it published in a scholarly source. Well, what I would do is I would choose a journal that fits this topic that uh, my paper is on. So for example, I'm currently working on a paper that examines the uh, marriage experiences of people that identify as bisexual. And there's a specific scholarly journal called the Journal of Bisexuality with that I'm going to be submitting this paper to. So once I get this paper polished up and I think it's ready to go, I'm going to send it to that particular journal. That journal, the Journal of Bisexuality, has an editor. The editor will take a look at my paper and decide if they think it might be a good fit for their journal. If they don't, they'll email me back and say, hey, we're not interested in this paper we don't think it's a good fit at this time and I'll have to try and find another journal to submit it to. If this editor of the journal thinks that it might be a good fit, he will reach out to several experts in this field. So other sociologists that study uh, bisexuality and marriage in some context, and they'll ask three to five other experts if they would be willing to review this paper that I submitted. Okay, and so those are called uh, scholarly reviewers. Okay, so journal, every journal uh, has a number of different people that will review manuscripts and again it's based specific on what the focus of that journal is and sp more specifically the paper that is being submitted. So let's say I get they find three people to review my paper and all of those reviewers would need to come to some consensus that the paper that I submitted, the science that I'm producing and, and trying to get published in this paper is of high enough quality that it is deserving of being published in that journal. Now Typically, when papers get sent out to journals, about uh, 80 to 90 percent of them will either get rejected by the reviewers, meaning that the reviewers don't think that the research being producted, uh, produced in that manuscript is of high enough quality or it's not offering something new or valuable to the field. Um, so they'll downright reject it. Um, what you're hoping to get is called a revise and resubmit, which basically means that the reviewers read through the piece. They think that there's some good science there, but they have some suggestions for you to make revisions. Um, so they'll ask you to revise it and then resubmit the paper and it will undergo review again. Very, 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 very rarely does a paper that you submit to a journal automatically get accepted for publication because the reviewers almost always have feedback to provide because science, again, needs to be very meticulous. It needs to make, we need to make sure that we are dotting all of our I's, crossing all of our T's. So those reviewers need to be on the same page that it is of high enough quality to get published. 
if you get to the point where all three of the reviewers and the editor of the journal agree that yes, this paper is good enough to get published, uh, they will accept it for publication and it will get published in that academic journal. This review process typically takes about a year. So that's just another thing to keep in mind about how time consuming and laborious this is. Um, you submit the article, like I said, submit the paper, the editor needs to find reviewers for it. The reviewers need weeks to review the paper, provide feedback. If you get a revise and resubmit, they send it back to the author. The author needs to make revisions. It sends out for review and review again. And at that point, the reviewers might offer another section of revise and resubmit. You know, they might still have more feedback. And this takes months, several, several months to get a paper published. So it's, a, again, a really, really time consuming and rigorous process to get a paper published as a scholarly source. But these scholarly sources, uh, it takes a long time to get them published because that's the rigor that it requires to produce a scientific knowledge in our discipline, right? This isn't just like writing a blog post that anyone can access or throwing up some information on Twitter or on Facebook that anybody can do. To publish science takes a lot of work. The last aspect of a scholarly source is that it will contain citations to other scholarly sources that are related to the research topic. So this is often called a work cited or a reference page or a bibliography at the end of um, the end of every scholarly source. And I'm sure all of you have had to write some type of bibliography for papers that you've written in the past, but uh, scholarly sources to get published in a journal, we're typically talking about citing anywhere from 20 to 100 other published scholarly sources, academic journal articles, academic books, etc. in that single paper that we've written. So the journal, the paper that I'm currently working on about bisexual marriage, I think I have close to 100 sources that I've cited in that paper. And the reason for doing that is that by citing those sources, I'm proving that I have read all of this research, that I'm informed in previous research that's been conducted in this area. And by being informed by previous research, it demonstrates that I know what gaps are existing out there. And that's what my research is trying to address. So this is a really rigorous, time-consuming process. And I take a lot of time to discuss this because I think most entry-level college students don't really have a solid understanding about how much work it takes to get a scholarly source published. And uh, that's why when we're talking about reviewing the literature, uh, we want to make sure that people know how to find scholarly sources rather than just relying on, you know, non-scholarly, non-academic sources that anyone can publish. So there's typically two types of scholarly sources. The first is academic journal articles, which I've talked about. Uh, this is an example of another journal. In the field of sociology alone, there's, you know, dozens, if not hundreds of journals that um, specifically publish social research. Um, one of them is teaching sociology. So in the field of sociology, there's an entire journal dedicated to research about methods in teaching in the field of sociology. Um, a couple years ago, I published, got an article published in Teaching Sociology about uh, the importance of teaching students how to con uh, conduct research projects in classes that are not research methods classes. Um, and so you can see it's several different aspects of this journal article here. Um, we'll come back to that in a minute. Another form of scholarly sources are academic books. So uh, researchers don't just try and publish journal articles, which tend to be shorter and focused on one specific topic. We also write books oftentimes. Um, this one on the right here, Destined for Greatness, is actually a book written by a fellow sociologist here at TAMUCC, Dr. Michael Ramirez. So let's talk about identifying the uh, different qualities of scholarly sources. Remember, we talked about a few of them just a couple minutes ago. The first is that uh, the author will typically have an academic affiliation. So on this particular article that I published, you can see that there's a little blurb at the bottom of the first page of the article that gave my corresponding information. So it's easy, you see I am affiliated with a university, uh, which is typically a good sign that the person re, uh, producing this manuscript is um, involved in academia or it has a higher degree of some sort. It'll also be published by a scholarly organization, right? So it's not getting published by um, some biased news organization or anything. This particular journal is published by Sage, which is a very well-known publisher. And more specifically, it's um, an affiliate with the American Sociological Association, which is the national organization for sociologists here in the US. Third quality, 
it undergoes peer review. This is kind of a given. If something gets published in a scholarly journal, we know that it's undergone peer review process. Sometimes articles will include a specific note that say that the article was reviewed by certain individuals. That's not always a given. If something gets published in an academic journal, you know that it underwent peer review. And the last quality uh, here, so yeah, editor's note that suggests that this, or re-emphasizes that it went under peer review. Last thing here, it cites other scholarly sources. You can see this is just a snippet here. I cited dozens of sources in this paper to prove that I was well-read and well-versed in research examining uh, teaching methods in the field of sociology. So what are some sources that are not scholarly sources? Well, newspaper and magazine articles do not qualify as scholarly sources. Oftentimes, journalists will report about scholarly research. You know, you'll see major headlines saying that scientists have discovered or research has found blah, blah, blah in newspaper magazines, online blogs, etc. But that does not make it a scholarly source. That is a journalist that is reporting findings from a scholarly source, right? So it's really important to distinguish the two. Um, Wikipedia, not a scholarly source. Uh, blogs, not a scholarly source. Anything that has not undergone peer review is not a scholarly source. So again, peer review is the single most important component that distinguishes a scholarly source, right? So let's take a look at this example here. Is this a scholarly source? Why don't you pause the video for a minute um, and read this little blurb I ex extracted here from an article. Um, and decide yourself if you think this is a scholarly source. So go ahead, pause the video, take a few seconds to read this, and then resume when you've finished. So the answer, no, it is not a scholarly source. You might say, why is that? Look, the person here, the author, um, has a master's degree in social work. She's a psychotherapist. Um, you know, definitely seems to have an academic affiliation. Um, references are cited. It's published in Psychology Today, which sounds to be like a scholarly source. So why is this particular um, piece of writing not qualify as a scholarly source? Well, while the author is a credible scholar and cites other scholarly work, the author is merely reporting the findings of a scholarly source. So again, this is important to be careful when you're looking for information, looking for sources. This is a, repor a report about an actual scholarly source. While the publisher's psychology today sounds like a credible source, it is a magazine publication. It's not an academic journal, meaning the content does not within it does not require peer review, right? So this particular study that gets referenced here, this Gender Differences and Patterns in Trends in U.S. Homicide, uh, which was published in the journal Violence and Gender, this itself is a scholarly source. This writing, this uh, kind of synopsis of that research is not a scholarly source. So important to be able to learn how to distinguish those things. How do we find scholarly sources? Well, you can find them by searching in what we call databases, which are collections of online scholarly journals and books. Um, university libraries offer access to hundreds of online databases. If we click this here, it will take us to our TAMU CC library database page. Here we are. Anything I type in here, it's going to bring up a number of different databases. Um, I can select specific subjects. If I want to specifically select sociology, database types here, I can select to only get academic journal articles, etc. Lots of different options when we're searching for scholarly sources through online databases. Another really popular uh, online database for scholarly sources is Google Scholar. If you simply go to Google on the home page and then type scholar in the search bar and search it, it will take you to the Google Scholar page. Do that here. If I type in scholar, boom, now we are in Google Scholar. So anything I type in the search bar, now let's just do gender violence. All of these sources that pop up here are scholarly sources, meaning they are all academic sources that have undergone peer review. They're either going to be journal articles or they're going to be scholarly books that have all undergone peer review. So when you're looking for scholarly sources, a few easy ways to access those using these databases. Why do we need to review the literature? Well, becoming knowledgeable about what other researchers have found on the topic you're interested in makes you informed. It demonstrates you're educated in that topic. 
It helps us identify gaps uh, in previous research that we need to address with our own research. And it helps us identify findings and theories that have been previously developed, right? When we're conducting research, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. If a scientist has done the exact same study that I'm proposing, typically I don't want to do the exact same thing. I want to find some nuance that I can build or add to contribute to furthering that body of knowledge.